Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make homemade croissants and this is what they look like. As you can see the classic shape, beautiful golden brown color that's nice and shiny and when these are freshly made they are wonderfully crisp on the outside. And then when you cut into one, a, you can always tell a well-made croissant because inside you're going to have this beautiful honeycomb design. So to start, we're going to start with the dough. Now, if you have ever read instructions, written instructions on how to make croissants, they can be a little long and complicated and you kind of go, I can't do this. But what I'm going to try to do here in this video is to break it down and show you all the steps and talk about, you know, what to watch for, how to do it so that you too can make a really great croissant at home. And what's great is I, you don't need any mixer for this. I am just going to make the dough by hand in a large bowl. And so the first thing you will need, the first thing, I like to measure my ingredients. You know, this is one of those times, you know, I always go on about it, but I really prefer to uh, weigh my ingredients rather than use the cup measurements. So this is time to buy a scale. But I will give you the cup measurements anyways. Um, so you will need 475 grams, which is three and two thirds cups of all purpose flour. You may know that as plain flour. Just put it in a large bowl. And then this uh, dough is a little sweet. So I'm adding uh, 65 grams, which is a third of a cup of granulated white sugar. Put that over the top. And then I'm now there's a couple ingredients I'm going to use here that I don't normally do. And, uh, you know, the first thing is you will need six grams of SAF gold instant yeast. This is not the same as active dry yeast. Instant yeast is the, um, the particles are very small and professionals use it. And for a couple of reasons, one, you don't have to proof the yeast and it really gives good rise uh, with, with any dough that you're using when you have a long fermentation period, which is what we have with, um, with this particular uh, croissant dough. So six grams, which is, I don't know what I said, one and three quarter teaspoons. Now, if you, you can source it online very easily. That's what, that's what I did. Uh, if not, you can use your active dry yeast. You will need 10 grams, which is two and a half teaspoons, but do activate it in the water that we're going to use and add a little sugar to that water. Then the, the next ingredient is two grams, which is two thirds of a teaspoon of uh, dry malt diastatic power, powder. And again, you can source it online very easily. And you don't have to use this, but again, it's used by professionals and not to get too tactical, but what happens is it breaks down the starch, which then the into sugar, which then the yeast can feed on, which is really good again with any type of dough, which has a long fermentation period. So, you know, try to find it or I mean, it's easy to find, but you know, try it. It really helps for any dough with a long uh, fermentation period. So I'm just going to use my hand. You could use a whisk, but I'm going to use my hand here. And then you will need 10 grams, which is two and a half teaspoons of salt. I am mixing my, the reason I'm not, didn't add that right away is because I want my yeast. Yeast and salt do not like each other. So I'm adding, getting that yeast all mixed into the flour before I add my salt and stir that in. And then what we're going to add is just two or 25 grams, which is two tablespoons of unsalted butter at room temperature. And I've just cut it into little pieces. We are going to use, don't worry, if you think that's not very much butter, we're going to use lots of butter uh, later on. We'll more than make up for it. So what I'm going to do is just with my fingers, work that butter into the flour until it's like small pieces. And then you will need 240 grams, which is one cup of just water at room temperature. And when I say room temperature, I mean about 75 degrees, which is about 24, 25 degrees C. 
And you will also need 30 grams, which is three tablespoons of um, cream. Uh, you can use a, like a light cream, half and half, or a heavy cream. You know, it adds richness, so whatever type you have in the house. And have that at room temperature. Everything at room temperature here, all your ingredients. Okay, so I'm just making a well in the center. Do my hands. And then if you, can, if you have one of these, these they're just plastic, they're really cheap to buy. Kind of buy them in cookware stores online. Uh, really good tool to have. Or you could use a wooden spoon or a spatula. So what I'm going to do is just pour my water in there along with my cream. And then I'm going to work the dry ingredients into the wet and just work it around. I mean, you could use a mixer, but what, you know, I don't feel like pulling it out for this because it's not that hard to do. We're just looking to moisten all these ingredients. I know some recipes really need this, like need the dough a lot. I don't. I'm ju I just really, uh, it's just basically we're mixing this together. So I just do it by hand. And then I'm just going to get my hands in there. And what, what I'm really trying to do is just make sure all the dry ingredients are moistened. So just kind of, you know, really work it. It's going to be a sticky, you know, lumpy mass. And that is what it's supposed to be. So don't worry about it. It will smooth out later once we start rolling. So then what, as soon as I get all the um, dry ingredients moistened, what we're going to do is just cover this. See, I'm just pulling it apart to make sure that it's all moistened, all the, the flour is moistened with some liquid. So what I'm going to do is cover this with plastic wrap and let it sit at room temperature. By that I mean around 75 degrees, so you know, most kitchens are about that. Um, and let it sit for an hour. And we're going to let it just ferment. It's not going to rise much. I mean, actually, hardly at all. We're just going to let it ferment, and that will develop flavor in our dough. So, so that's, as you can see, this is pretty simple to do. So just cover it, let it sit room temperature for an hour, and we'll see you back here then. So it's been an hour. So now what we're going to do is roll out our dough. You will need to have a baking sheet just dusted with some flour and dust your surface with some flour. And then just gonna put that like so. And again, dust the top. You probably, you know, it's quite sticky, so, you know, you might have to move it around a lot, dust it with more flour if you need to. And what we're going to do is roll it into a 14 by 10 inch, which is 35 by 25 centimeter rectangle. It's a nice soft dough at this point. So you will have to have a handy ruler, yardstick, whatever. So just keep moving it around. And if you don't want to use a rolling pin, I mean, you just could use your fingers to form this. It's have to, but I find the uh, rolling pin is the easiest way. Kind of run your hands over it as you're working. You want that to, you want it to be an even thickness. So just roll it or stretch it a little. And then just, you know, keep lifting it up and putting it down. So, you know, what happens is it tends to, you stretch it out and then if you lift it up and kind of flap it down, 
kind of shrinks a little. Let's switch. So it's almost, well, we're almost there. And then what we're going to do is just put this on our baking sheet, dust it with a little flour, and then we're going to put it in the refrigerator. That's about right. Yeah. We're going to put it in the refrigerator. A minimum, try to get it, you want it at that exact size. I know I hate to be exact, but with this you do want to be. Um, we, and then just cover it, put a little flour on the top and cover it with some plastic wrap and put it into the refrigerator. Now you want at least uh, six hours or you can do it overnight, whichever, you know, the time frame, how it works for you. And w w the reason we do this is one is to let that dough relax and then we want it to get really cold and firm because a croissant dough is a laminated dough, which means you have two layers of dough and with a layer of butter in between. And this is a dough, we're gonna wrap the butter around. And what you wanna have is the temperature of your dough as cold as your butter. So that's why we're putting it in the fridge and getting it nice and cold and nice and firm. So, like I said, at least six hours, or you know, if you want to do this part one day and then let it sit overnight, and then we'll pick it up and you can pick it up in the morning, whichever works for you. So, when we come back, we will start with our butter layer. So, our dough has now chilled sufficiently, so we're going to start our butter layer. The first thing I like to do is to take a sheet of parchment paper because we have to um, form the butter into a, a certain size. So I take a piece of parchment paper and then I've just drawn a line 10 inches uh, long and 7 inches wide, which is 25 by 18 centimeters. And then once you've drawn your line, just flip your parchment paper over. So for our butter, you need 225 grams, which is one cup of cold, unsalted butter. Now, you want to use a higher fat butter for this, if possible, because that will make our croissants even more flaky and buttery flavor. And this higher fat butter is usually at least 83% butter fat is usually called either cultured or if you live in the States, we call it European style butter. So then what I do is I take the butter and just cut it into six pieces and then just kind of put it like so. And you want it cold, as I said. And just kind of space it out there. And we're going to pound the butter. So I just take it like that within the square, put that over, and then we take our rolling pin and we're going to bang. A little noisy here. Pound that just a little more, a little more noise. Okay, so I've got it softened a little. So then what I do, I'm just gonna move this, just even it out a little. What I'm gonna do is fold my paper so I have it at that seven by 10 inches. There's a reason for this. It may seem complicated, but it does make it easier in the end. So I kind of got that, and then I'm just going to flip this over like so. And then what I'm going to do is pound, roll the butter within that rectangle, and you want it. You want to make sure that your butter layer is even thickness. So just press down and roll. Okay, 
so I do have it within that triangle or rectangle and just run your hand over it to make sure it's of even thickness and then just you know use your rolling pin to even it out so what we want is our butter to be cold but but still pliable so it's mine's pretty good you see it bends a little but it's still I find I think it's a little soft so at this point, I'm just going to put this back in the fridge for about 15 minutes, or you could pop it into the freezer for less time. And then when we come back, we're going to laminate our dough. So now we're going to laminate our dough. You've got to butter, peel back the parchment paper. We have our chilled dough. So just take that and put it right in the center. And see now why we measured everything, because the butter has to fit perfectly to the center of our croissant dough. So just peel that off. And then, so, put that in the center. And then just take the ends and wrap it around that butter. And then just kind of seal the edges. You want the butter right to the edge. You can see right to the edge of your dough. So just kind of play with it there. Now when you're working with this dough, temperature is so important because that is what it will, you know, if, it, if your butter gets too soft, that will affect your, the uh, croissant, the uh, texture and all that. So. It is best, okay, it's best to work in a cold kitchen. By that I mean 73 to 75 degrees, which is what well, I think 23, 24C. If at any time you find your butter getting too soft, stop and then just put it back, your dough back on your baking sheet into the fridge until that butter firms up. Now, I live in a hot climate and even though I have the air on, I have my granite and it does get warm. So what I have come up with you may wonder why I have a pot. And I put my, this pot in the, in the freezer, get it really cold. You could use an ice pack. And then what I do is I rub it over my counter to get it cold. I find otherwise, you know, where I live, it just gets too hot in here. My dough gets soft and you don't want that. So again, if at any time you find your dough getting, your butter getting too soft, stop. This is, a, uh, this is a labor of love, croissants, and if it takes a little longer, then it takes a little longer. So now, what we're going to do is we're gonna roll this out into, width is not so important here, what we want is length. And we want 22 inches long. And I think that's 55, centimeters. I do have in the written instructions, but I believe <laughs> should check that. But anyway, so flour your counter and keep flouring and moving the dough as you go. Flour the top and then just seal those edges. We're, we're looking at about eight inches, uh, 20 centimeters wide, but that, you know, don't worry so much about the width, it's the length. So what I'm going to do is just tap that. And we are going to do this process three times. And that is going to give us all those wonderful buttery layers. I think that equals uh, 81 layers, I think, something like that. So now roll, center outwards. We want to keep the thickness the same. You want to work, as I said, pretty quickly because, well, I have to because my counter gets warms up pretty fast. So, and what you want to do is, you know, if you have this bench scraper, you want to move that dough. Kind of lift it up and flap it down because it will stretch and we want to let it shrink and then keep stretching. Now, if you see, you can get a yardstick, but if you see, I've just put tape, masking tape, to tell me at the 22 inches. You can just use a ruler, 
yardstick, but I hate keeping getting my ruler out, so I just put those, and I find that makes it easy. Now, kind of, you know, you can even up your edges as you go. Flap that dough, as I, I guess that's what you call it. So, uh, that looks pretty good. Even that out a bit. If it's a little longer, don't worry. You just don't want it. You want it. If your dough is too thick, that's one of the reasons. If you notice croissants that, that are don't have that honeycomb design and they're kind of like a thick layer of dough all the way around, sometimes that's because your dough, you didn't roll it out thin enough. So, I'm, I'm about there. So, this is our first fold. So, you take your, I'm taking the top. Fold it into the center, uh, thirds, kind of like your, um, an envelope, you know, a letter that you're folding the letter. So about there, take this, fold it up over, and then you want it, and see, you want it even. And that is our first turn. So then what I do is I turn it, and you got to turn nine degrees. So I turn it so that this, it's like a, I call it like a book binding, is on my left side. Now, I'm going to roll it again. My dough is not that warm. If you found it's really soft, then cover it and refrigerate it before you do the second turn. So, this is, again, we're doing the same length, same width. Okay, that's our second. I got it out to the required length. Looks about good. So again, fold down a third, brush off. You can take a pastry brush, just brush off any excess flour. Kind of even it up there. Take this, fold it up, oh, and put that just down. Okay, you want that even, looks good. And that is our second turn. Now, I am, it's soft, I, I am going to let it rest. We got, you have to do the same process one more time. So I'm just going to take this, flour the bottom of your sheet pan, just even that up, we have a little flour on top, cover it, and refrigerate it for an hour. And then we come back, we're going to do our third and final turn. Okay, so it's been an hour, we're going to do our final roll. Again, have that fold side on the left, and then flour your counter, flour the top. I did, again, uh, take my pot and rub it over the surface to cool things off, and roll this way, not this way. <laughs> end to end here, and again, same as before. Okay, so we're at about 22 inches, 55 centimeters. It's about eight inches wide, 20 centimeters. And now again, our final fold here, third, third. And so now what we're gonna do again, flour your baking sheet, put this on, we're gonna cover and refrigerate it again for an hour. That'll let the dough relax and firm up. Okay, so now, the next step. We've done our rolling and folding. So now what we're gonna do is get our um, croissant dough into the required length and width to um, form our, our croissants. I do this in two stages. That way, because your dough, you stretch it and then you kinda wanna let it relax a little and then we'll stretch it a little more, roll it a little more. So again, flour your surface. So what we're going to do first is I like to do it at about the 16 inch length and about nine inches wide, which is um, 40 by 23 centimeters. And so just roll as before from the center outwards. Okay, so we're at the desired length. I did 
change my tape to do it that way. But we have to also make it a little wider because right now I'm at uh, about eight inches, 20 centimeters. I want to go to nine. So just turn my dough and I'm just gonna roll this way to nine inches. Check that, that looks about right, because that's the height of our, uh, the width of our croissant is going to be 9 inches, 23 centimeters. So I'm just going to now, I'm going to put it back on my baking sheet, cover it, and refrigerate it. You want to let it relax a bit, uh, 30, and I usually do it 60 minutes, and when we come back, we will form our croissants. Okay, so now it's been an hour. Um, just a little note, if you want to, at this point, I let it uh, chill about an hour, you could actually cover and chill it overnight if you wanted to bake off your croissants in the morning. So now what we're going to do is roll this to 24 inches, which is about 60 centimeters. And again, we're going to keep it at the 9 inch, 23 centimeter width. So as always, just, you know, lift, kind of flap it. Let it shrink back. And also, you want to make a template, that's what I do, for our croissants, like this, out of plastic. I just use a plastic cutting board. Three and three quarters across the bottom, about nine and a half centimeters, and nine inches high, 23 centimeters. I find that the fastest and easiest way, and then that way I don't have to get out my measuring tape and uh, try to figure out each one. So if you want to do it that way, like I have. Okay, I think we're at about right. So flap that, make sure it shrinks a little, as much as it wants to shrink back. I have my tape at 24 inches, 60 centimeters, so I don't have to use a yardstick. Make sure it's not sticking. Yeah, it's about right, and I'll, my little trusty thing. That's, I'm just gonna roll it a little. It's not overly, you don't have to be exact, but. And then I like to, you can use a large knife or I'm using a pizza wheel, pizza cutter to cut out my croissant. So we take our thing, we put it, you will have a little bit of leftover on the ends. You will get about 11 croissants. Don't throw this out, store it, because in another video, I will show you how to make, what to do with that, and make some monkey bread. So just use your template to cut out your croissants, like so. And then what I'll do, so you don't have to watch me do that, is we have our triangle. Take it in one hand at the top, and stretch it out, stretch it down, and put it whichever way you like. I like to do it this way. I take a sharp knife, cut a little, you know, half an inch, about a centimeter down the thing there, and then, let's move this over, and then stretch it out like so, and then we're going to roll it just a bit to get it started. And then these, now I don't want to roll down the center. So what I do is, with the, just in the inside, we'll see if we can get this right. And you roll like this. See, just on the ends. And then you get your croissant. And then you want two parchment lined baking sheets. And make sure that where that's the end is on the bottom. So I'll show you one more. Grab in one hand the top, stretch it down to thin that out a little. Put it down, take a knife, 
make a little cut, kind of stretch those two ends out, and then roll it. We don't, well, the reason we're doing rolling from the ends is we don't want to squish that center. So I just use it, like I said, in there. It takes a little practice, and don't worry if they're not perfect. And then just roll your ends. See? Like, like so. Whoops. <laughs> Almost perfect. There we go. And that's what you do. Just carry on doing it that way. Okay, so now we've got our croissants done. So what we're going to do is brush them with an egg wash. So in a bowl, I have one large egg plus two large egg yolks, and they're at room temperature. So that's uh, 50 grams of oak for the large egg and 35 grams of egg yolks. And just whisk those. And then we're just going to brush the tops of our croissant, the sides, with the egg wash. And this, you know, one, we're doing it now because when we proof them, that will prevent them from drying out. And two, when we bake them off, we're going to brush them again. And that will give us a really nice shine and help them become golden brown. So just with a pastry brush, just brush the tops in this, like that. So now we have to proof our croissants. You want to do this at, you, you don't want it hot. You want it around the 75 degree uh, Fahrenheit, 24 degrees Celsius, because if you have it, you know, a lot of times bread, if you try to, you can, you proof it higher than that. But the problem is we don't want the butter to melt in a croissant. So you have to have it at a pretty cool temperature. And then, so it is going to take, I find between normally around two hours, an hour and a half, two hours. And then what I do, I mean, there's different ways you can cover this. I just put inside each one inside a kitchen, plastic kitchen um, bag. You could, if you had like a plastic container tub thing, you could uh, put it over top. So anyways, uh, about two hours. And then about 20 minutes, half hour before you're going to bake your uh, croissant sauce off, preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 200 degrees Celsius. And since we have two baking pans, have your, pan, your racks in the upper and lower thirds of your oven. And... The way you will see at the end of, of the proofing, but the way you know your croissant is ready is if you kind of take your pan and uh, shake it, the, the croissants will kind of jiggle. <laughs> so that's, I'll show you when we get there. So we'll see you back in a couple hours. So now it's been two hours. Our uh, croissants have now risen. They're kind of, they're soft if I press it, or if I kind of shake the pan, they kind of jiggle. <laughs> So that's when you know they're done. So what we're going to do is lightly brush them one more time with our egg wash. So now what we're going to do is bake our croissants two sheets at a time for 10 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 200 degrees Celsius. Then after 10 minutes, rotate your pans top to bottom, front to back, and reduce your oven temperature to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, 109 degrees Celsius, and bake for about another 10 minutes or until golden brown. Okay, so our croissants are done, aren't they gorgeous? It just smells wonderful in here. So look, they're a beautiful golden brown color, nice and shiny. You can kind of tell they're, the outside is nice and crisp. So I'm going to let them cool, obviously a little too hot right now. And when we come back, we will try one. Okay, so we're going to try one. You, as you probably know, a croissant is at its best when it's freshly made. So the outside, Oh, nice and crisp, flaky, and then the inside, mm -hmm. nice and soft and bread-like. They're just so good. 
Um, you know, as you can see, this is a bit of a process, you know, but I really think it's worth learning the craft of making a homemade croissant. I mean, I, I just, it's so fulfilling. People will love it. So try it. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Thank you.